Hey crafty friends, this is Jenny from crafttestdummies.com giving you a video review of the Fiskars Fuse Creativity System. And this is a handheld camera so it's going to be shaky. Buckle up. So um, I'm going to show you kind of how it looks when it's all folded up like a suitcase. This mama jamma, she is heavy. So once you get her set up, you're going to want to leave her in place for a while. Um, but there are a lot of advantages to the size, which we'll get to. Um, there is a little handle here. It's this orange thing and it will actually snap apart. And oops, let me show you too. There's um, the crank handle. If you depress, I can't hardly do this with one hand, but if you squeeze those orange things, it releases the handle and then it just opens up like a suitcase. So here's a good, you can kind of see just how long it is. Um, you get a nice 12 inch cutting swath here. So it will cut 12 by 12 papers. So what I'm going to do now is put this uh, camera on a tripod so that I can use both hands free and show you all of the features of the Fiskars Fuse Creativity System. Okay, so here we are inside the fuse. I have it all set up in the table. I can't even get it all in the shot. It is so long. Um, but just a reminder that, you know, this slides down. And what you have is a storage panel right in the front. So it will hold everything that actually comes with the kit right inside, which is, um, oops, I don't even have anything. That, oops, this also goes in the kit. This is your medium base plate. It's for using for just embossing if you don't want to die cut. You get the medium cutting plate, which has a rubberized surface. You get um, a Fiskars ink pad and then you get a basic design and this is a scalloped circle. Um, you don't get the um, Allen wrench but I'm going to tell you why I use it and why I've got it there. So first let's just do a quick thing about the dies. Um, the design of the dies themselves are actually really really smart to me because they have a little registration notch so there's only one way that the top will actually go on this unit and that's important when we flip it around to do the letter pressing. But if you're storing them up on a shelf so that you can see the top, it's nice because you can see exactly what you've got. If you're storing them sideways on a shelf, you can see exactly what you have because there's that scalp again. And when you open it up, it will hold the two letter press plates that come with it. Each die you purchase has two um, letter press plates that fit into it. And then if you want to, you can buy expansion packs, which is, here's a set of four, and it seems like they always come in a set of four, um, and they come in a nice little handy storage container too, um, but then they're interchangeable. So here you have a big, and it's, and notice this is a big scallop circle, and then there's a bunch of different designs that will work with it, which is kind of fun. Um, by the way, these are called medium sizes which one then can only presume means there's going to be a smaller size and maybe a large size. Also, as I mentioned before, this is a 12 inch uh, cutting throat. So it will accommodate up to 12 inches, which is nice if you wanna do something like in the middle of a page. But I think maybe this is, I hope, I hope, because they're gonna come up with some really large size um, dies and letterpress plates. But okay, so let's move on. So I'm going to show you um, how you would use it. First of all, if you just want to die cut by itself, you would um, take out the embossing plate or the letterpress plate, put a piece of paper on the top, put your um, cutting plate face down. That means the rubberized surface goes there. You can feed it in either widthways or lengthways depending on your paper and what you want to do and then you just give it a crank. Now what I really like about the Fiskars Fuse is that this crank is so nice and smooth. Um, there's no cutting. It's really heavy duty. This is metal. It, it's almost like um, an industrial rolling mill. And the action's really smooth. You don't have to do 80 million cranks for it to glide through. It's a really nice action. My seven-year-old can do this without straining herself. So then it would cut through, Ta -da! kind of like so. Now, if you notice, sometimes it's a little hard. This is a deep die. It's one of those steel rule ones. You can kind of see that little shiny bit right there. That's the metal. Um, and it can get stuck in here, but I'm going to give you my tip for that. Now, if you want to do the embossing, 
at the same time, I'm going to throw one of those in. Boom. Okay, now this is for just embossing and cutting. And it's the same thing again. You place your paper on top and you give it a little cranky crank. Like so. And now, it, this comes right off and there you go. Now, if that doesn't want to come off, they suggest using a cotton swab. I found that an Allen wrench works really well for popping out the, um, the letterpress die and then releasing your paper. By the way, this is watercolor paper. This machine loves watercolor paper. Please buy watercolor paper when you buy this machine because look at that beautiful indentation and it looks even cooler when you've got color on it, which is what I'll show you next. Yay! Okay. Um, whew, I'm done with my last piece of watercolor paper that I cut for this. So this is how you ink it up if you want to do the letter pressing and the dyeing all at the same time. First thing you have to do is, remember that lid? You need it. Notice these little pegs? They correspond with the pegs in the back. Remember that little registration divot in the top? It corresponds. So you pop that in, and then you can put your die, I'm calling this a die, it's not a die, it's a letter pressing plate, right on top. You just nestle it in, like so. It um, is not real secure in there to be, I mean, it, it is, I can move it around, um, but it's raised up, and that's so you can take your stamp pad and go around and stamp it up. By the way, they say that you can use any um, like a linen topped pad. The squishy, spongy ones don't work so great. But I've used um, these archival ink ones from Ranger and they're working really good and I even used a distress pad and they also work fine. Okay, now here's the thing. You must remove the orange carrier. So you're going to lift it back up like so. And if you heard it, now that letterpress I just dropped in. So I can move this to the side, put my paper on top, put my cutting plate back on top. I feed it through gently with my non-dominant hand and give it a little cranky poo and grab it on the other side. And now you can see here again. By the way, these pads are going to need to be replaced. They are just, you know, I'm using them a lot just in my um, testing. Um, but uh, they'll, they will sell you just um, the rubber. In, in, so you can actually just peel off the rubber pad and replace the pad, which is great. Now, remember how this is stuck in there? And this is like got ink on it. I don't want to mess it up. So I'm going to do a little trick. I'm going to put it back in the carrier and push down. And now my piece just lifts away. Ah, oh, isn't that pretty? I hope you can catch the dimension on that. You can even see a little bit. See it in the back? That's how you know it's really letter pressed and it's gorgeous. So one of the things I also like the machine is this wide surface doubles as um, a working tray. Um, I can actually stand here and ink things up and cut things out and it's almost like I have a little table to work on. Um, so let me show you some other examples. So here is some just regular kind of text weight paper. This is another piece of watercolor paper. This is some um, brown craft paper cardstocky weight, a little heavier than cardstock. Here's some vellum. Now here's the little thing I found out about vellum. If you're going to put vellum through, even to emboss it, you need to put another piece of cardstock underneath. Otherwise, it's just not thick enough to take the embossing. Here's one that I got to emboss. You can barely see it. It'll be on the still photos too. Um, but I backed it with cardstock first. Otherwise, you can do two or three sheets of vellum at the same time, which is also nice. Here's some glittery cardstock. Here's some craft foam. Kind of a cool effect. By the way, if you're going to use craft foam and you want to let it press it, make sure you use like a stays on pad um, because your traditional stamp pads won't ever dry on craft foam. Um, this is basswood. I think it's absolutely stunning. This is balsa wood. It did crack a little bit, but I would still use that. I'm just saying. Um, 
that's some thin text weave paper. This is the liner from a candy box, just because I thought it'd be fun to do and it worked. Here is some cork paper and um, this is like metallic, well, what is it? It's craft foil is what it is. But you could also use um, an aluminum soda can. So these are all things I did with the Fiskars Fuse and the dies that came with the kit. Now I know a lot of you are gonna ask, but wait, does the Fiskars Fuse dies work in maybe my Cuddle Bog or my Sizzix Big Shot? And the answer is yes. Yes, they will. Um, and here's the thing that I found out about that. If you're going to use these dies in your Vagabond or Sizzix machine, of course it won't work in a Spellbinders or your Cuddle Bug, what I needed to use was a Cuddle Bug C plate. The B plates didn't work, the ones that came with my Vagabond didn't work, but the Cuddle Bug C plate was the key to making this work. And as a matter of fact, um, all the ones that are shaped like uh, the flowers here, I actually cut out using my Cuddle Bug and my Vagabond and the Cuddle Bug C plate in the Fiskars die. Does that make sense? Yes. So that's kind of cool. So if you're like, oh, I'm in love with that, I need to have this die and I need to have this letter pressing technique and I have a Sizzix Big Shot, yes, you can do that. Uh, uh, the Vagabond works too. So the other question is, Will my machine, um, can I use my other dies? And the answer to that, again, is yes. Yes, you can. Now, you're gonna need something special. You're gonna need the adapter plates. Um, they come as a set. You get a base plate, a shim C, a shim B, a rubber mat, a, an adapter cutting plate. It goes on for days. But what you also get is this chart which tells you all of the recipes for cutting and embossing using Sizzix dies, Spellbinder dies, Cuddlebug products, um, lifestyle craft things, Stampin' Up things, and even the Fiskars and AccuQuilt. So you're gonna want to invest in the adapter set. But don't worry, I used um, my Sizzix alteration. I'm gonna reach over and show you. I used this die and I cut this out using my adapter plates. So it worked really well. Um, and like I said, I did some embossing. Um, there was only one thing, the framelits didn't have the right pattern, but that's because it wasn't on the, the list. I don't know if it was because it was so new. Um, but in order to cut a framelit, I used a base, a shim A, a shim B, and then the cutting pad. And I got it to cut out well. As a matter of fact, here it is, ta-da. There's my framelits that I cut out using the Fuse Creativity System. So that kind of gives you an overview of all the cool things that you can do and you can cut. Here, these ones, I all, cut all of these out using my other machines. So it really is an incredible system to me um, in the ways that you can mix and match. And oh, one last thing. You can use your Spellbinders dies and your Grand Nest Abilities. Let me move this away. But this is why I need Fis Fiskars. Okay, if you're so Fiskars, if you're listening, here's something I need you to do. I need you to make an adapter plate that will fit my Grand Nest Abilities dies. Notice how it's just a little bit too small. Yikes, I need the nice big adapter plates. But here's what I did. I actually did make it work. I used the um, formula for the Nest Abilities dies. And what I did is I ran it through once, kind of halfway on, and then I took it out and I flipped it around, and then I cut it again. Now, it wasn't perfect. I did get a little hanger on here, but I think if I practice, I could actually make it work um, and use my Grand Nest Abilities dies with the fuse. Otherwise, I'm hoping the Fiskars will come out with a nice, big adapter plate for us and some more cool big dies because i mean you've got 12 inches here why not use it all right that's it my friends thank you for watching please give the video a thumbs up if it was helpful for you please subscribe to our channel and leave me some comments about the fiskars fuse creativity system by fiskars thank you